Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It's my pleasure to talk to you today. I am the co-chair of Energy and Environmental Committee in the European Chambers of Commerce. It is my honor to talk to you about what we have done in ECCT and individual members. Our members are all private corporations. So we can talk about as a market player in Taiwan or in Europe how we are working on this subject to move on to net zero. My company have invested in green energies for multiple years. We invested in renewable energy and also developed green projects in Taiwan. We have experienced a lot of opportunities and challenges. I will sk skip the company introductions and personal introductions. The 28 European Union members have started to announce or pledge their net zero target. They also talk about their action plans. EU members have a lot of similarities between each other and under the umbrella of European unions. Members can work together and collaborate closer. In comparison, Taiwan is an island country. Our electric grid is isolated, so we have to deal with many issues by ourselves. So you can see a clear difference between EU and Taiwan. On this slide, you can see that European Union decided to have 2050 as the net zero target. Some countries have even more aggressive targets and aggressive uh, timeline. These are some of the members in European Union, for example, from Sweden, Ireland, France, Spain, Germany, Denmark, and Hungary. In Denmark, for example, they pledge that by 2030, they will ban the sale of new gasoline and diesel vehicles. As Deputy Minister have mentioned before, our net zero emissions is our common target. So we'll think about how to reduce carbon emissions and also capture the existing emission. We can use green energies to compensate those emissions. We can also increase a national grid stability and energy security in order to achieve those targets. In EU, most countries and members have their um, preliminary targets by 2030, and they hope to reach the net zero target by 2050. The European Council also have a targets called Fit for 55. It includes multiple important measures. Some of them have more impacts to companies in Taiwan. One of them is the emission trading system, the ETS system have been in operation for about 15 years. The, certain I the second item that impacts companies in Taiwan is CBAM. And these two systems are interconnected. 
Maybe later on, um, our representative from France can give us more insight from their side. Based on what I understand from European Council, there is a policy objective for these two systems. They want to support a lot of um, major emitters in European Union. They hope to reduce and eliminate a lot of subsidies or stipends to these major emitters in the near future so everyone can compete on the same level. It is a strategy that we can hope we hope to uh, reduce uh, the energy's um, consumption. In the ETS system, the emission trading system, EU is now thinking about phasing out the free allowance by 2025 and eliminate entirely by 2030. So in the future, everyone who emit carbon have to pay. The ETS systems also hope to include commercial buildings and residential buildings in the future. They will also include transportation into the ETS system. For marine and aviation, most of its emissions happen in the air or on the ocean, so it's more difficult to identify the source of emission. They have talked about marine and aviation emissions, but they have encountered objections from many non-European Union countries. But eventually, the European Union hope that through Further negotiations, they can extend ETS to marine time and aviation transport. As we move to net zero targets, we need technology, we need renewable energies, we also need legal structure and social consensus. That requires more conversations within the society. We also need more stakeholder participation as well. We also need more capital investments and financing efforts in order to move toward net zero targets. Thank you. There's one additional page. 